The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the October 24th, the marvelous Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-877. 927-6648. Now, if you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. That you would send to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, you'd put radio show question. Of course, inside our Tiger's Den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on magnificent Monday. My apology. I'm sorry. I've been fighting off a little sneeze there. I fought that one off. Hopefully, I'll continue to fight it off. So uh, in any event, I uh, don't even remember where I was at, but welcome to the show. Uh, so let's go ahead and get this uh, show uh, started out here right now. We've got a little bit of a mixed bag. That mix goes like this. The Dow is trading up 258 points, 8 tenths percent. S&P, a half a percent or 19 points. The uh, NASDAQ 100 is off 2 tenths or 19 points. The Russell is off about 3 tenths or 5 points. And about half a percent for the semis, down 11. Trannies are up 288. That's over 2% to the upside. Gold's off five bucks, trading out at 1651. Silver's up a nickel, trading at 1912. Lights recruit is off 31 cents. Natural gas up 28 cents. And the 30 treasures off one point and three ticks. Leading the charge, dollar wise to the upside, you've got Avis Budget Group up 22 bucks and change, nearly 12%. O'Reilly Automotive up 22 bucks or 3%. Regenerate Pharmaceuticals, 15 bucks or 2%. Elevance Hill, 13 bucks, two and a half percent. BlackRock, about two and three tenths or 14 points. To the downside, it's Booking Holdings off 43 bucks, followed by Mercado Libre off 38, followed by Huati International, 27. Pin Duo Duo is off 16, and Baidu is down 14. So we certainly have some movers and some shakers. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. Let's go start by taking a look at what's going on inside the uh, equity futures markets. Let's begin by taking a look at that NQ or the NASDAQ 100, which is off 22 points right now. <clears throat> so as we look at it, I'll start just from the lower time frame. So I'm going to go from and read from lower right to lower left and then uh, upper right to upper left. So we look at a 10 minute time frame, <coughs> 10, 10 minute time frame chart out here. You'll see this move lower bottom with the TD nine count pattern. It did that at uh, 1040. On a 15-minute basis, we have the same pattern. Of course, it completed at a slightly different time frame. That uh, completion took place or well, formed the nine count at 10.30. I confirmed it by um, 10.45. We take a look at a 30-minute time frame chart. This had a TD nine count earlier or late uh, last night at about 6.30 in the evening. What that did was that led to a test of support. That was the breakout level of 11. Still, okay, gosh, uh, thank you. Uh, sorry about that, folks. I forgot to uh, change my uh, window, but my uh, our good man Al in the production room just uh, slapped me upside the head with that two by four. Uh, so thanks for that, Al. So now lower right, 10 minute chart. You'll see at the very bottom bar number eight, a TD nine count pattern. 
On the 15-minute chart right next to it, you'll see another TD9 count pattern. Now, we take a look at the 30-minute time frame chart. A TD9 count top, that again took place at 6.30 last evening. That sent price back to its breakout level of support. Did that at 10.30 this morning. Price right now is uh, needs to close above, well, really needs to close above 11.475 and a quarter to suggest that it's something other than a consolidation between TD9 count breakout support, 11.235 and a quarter, and TD9 count breakdown resistance, 11.475 and a quarter. If we look at the 60-minute time frame chart, it too has a TD9 count top, and that took price right back to support, its support level being the bottom of its current profile. That's the 11214 area. On a two-hour time frame chart, don't really have much there other than price consolidating with inside its profile. The same for the 240. Uh, the five-hour time frame chart, really, I take that back. Now that we can see the A to B equals CD patterns out there in the five-hour chart, you had a confirmation of a sell to D point on the 240 as well as on the 120-minute chart. But price just pulling back right now and testing the support area of the oscillator and change line or the profile areas. And then on the daily time frame, so if we get over to the daily time frame, we know that price closed above the top of its daily profile on Friday. This morning, the pullback. We see some areas of support, specifically the 30-minute time frame chart level of support, and then bottom patterns on the 15 and 10-minute. While that was taking place, price was testing the top of that daily profile. So long as price remains above the top of the daily profile, 11,231, and especially if price can close above Friday's high, and Friday's high out there is um, 11,386.25, that's going to tell us about a further rally. Now, the further rally in the NQ, its price target would be the October 6th swing point. That October 6 swing point extends from a low of 11,505 to a high of 11,729 out there. You close above 11,729, and then that would signal to you and I that the NQ would want to target the 12,987 area. One step at a time, Vasily. Let's go take a look at the ES Mini out here. Uh, we'll see what its chart patterns are signaling. Oops, that didn't work very well. But uh, we'll see if Stevie's fat fingers can I get this typed in here. There we go. And what I'll also do while this chart is populating, just out of curiosity, um, see where we're at with regard to our TAS market breadth for the four different time frames that you and I track out here. So I'm getting that going at the same time that these ES mini charts here are populating. And uh, as soon as I can get to whichever one uh, gets done first, well, it looks like it's the ES mini. So here on the 10 minute time frame chart, no TD9 count bottom like we had on the NQ. No signal on the 15-minute chart like we had on the NQ. The 30-minute time frame chart pulling back into a level of support. That is its bullish structured profile. It did have a TD9 count topping pattern out there. Signals, again, not as clear on the ES. You had a nice TD9 count top on the 60-minute time frame chart. Um, that just took price back to the center of its profile at that time. There's a new profile that was formed above the prior profile was supported 37.43 and resistance up at the uh, 38.01 level. This did form above the prior profile. That's a slightly bullish message out there. What else do we see? You know what else we see? What do we see? Let's take a look at this A to B equals CD pattern for the ES Mini out here. And we're just going to look at this via the five-hour time frame chart. So if we draw in the A to B pattern out here, which we'll draw in, that's going to be up to uh, bar number seven. And we're just simply going to copy that and paste it. So the old copy, paste, and assemble, uh, in other words, Stevie, is a CPA. So if we go take a look at the cut, paste, and assemble process out here, we go ahead and we move that to the C point, we'll see that there is an A to B equals CD pattern far from being completed. That A to B equals CD pattern would get us up into the 3917 level. And if we take a look at a five-hour time frame chart and we look for where the breakdown area of resistance is at, the next level is up at 39 and a quarter. You can see 3811.50 is where price has to close above to uh, negate its uh, TD9 count breakdown area on a five-hour time frame chart. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Teddy Kegstad has just announced a live webinar coming up for subscribers to his newsletter, The Tiger Forex Report. Wednesday, October 26th at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy will be hosting a live 60-minute webinar, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report Newsletter. In this 60-minute webinar, Teddy will be discussing a full breakdown of the markets that influence currency pairs, as well as applying those variables to individual currency pairs, how to evaluate trading scenarios for risk versus reward, as well as a live question and answer session. 
Sign up now and gain instant access to this live webinar coming up, as well as a month subscription to Teddy's Tiger Forex Report, which comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this live webinar event with Teddy Kegstat, Wednesday, October 26th. Sign up now for the Tiger Forex Report at the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we've got on our screen right now are the TAS Market Breath uh, speed dials. Those are in the upper right-hand corner. You'll see that the 60-minute, uh, 240-minute, and daily, they're all in the green zone out there. That means that there's more instruments for those specific time frames. Trade above the top of their daily profile versus trading below the bottom. The weekly is the thorn in the side out here. If we take a look at the weekly right now, we'll see there's 89 instruments trading above the top of their weekly profile, 153 below the uh, bottom. So that's the first thing. We take a look at the NASDAQ 100 out here. We'll see a similar picture, 62.40 daily. They are in the bullish configuration, whereas on the weekly time frame, 16 instruments above the top, 27 below the bottom out there. So that says we still should expect and anticipate a uh, choppy market out there. The second aspect of the uh, choppy market comes from that spot volatility index. So as we change screens out here, we'll go to our black background screen. The chart that's going to pop up here momentarily is going to be in the S&P 500 up at the uh, top. You'll see these green and yellow rectangular type boxes, rectangular box. Um, and that is representing the time periods where, for the most part, the spot volatility is either above or below the 50-day exponential moving average. We've been above the 50-day exponential moving average since about um, the trading day, since about... I'm going to move over one more. There you go. So it's about August the 26th out there. We had about one or two days below that level. Now, when the 50 day, when uh, when the uh, when when the spot fix is above that 50 day, if you take a look at again those yellow rectangles, the markets typically move from move sideways to lower. That is unless we formed a uh, bottom out there. And there are bottoming patterns inside the S&P 500. Many of all the indices or most of the indices out there. Um, either Rhodes Mintum Indicator or TD9 or by the D point patterns out there and sometimes a combination of all of those. So right now, still choppy conditions. They would not be choppy. If you get that spot politics below the 50 day, then you'd see the S&P 500 really take off to the upside out there. So let's do this. I believe we have a question that has come in. And uh, so let's get to it. 
Uh, nothing inside the Tiger's Den that I see at the moment. Uh, actually, there looks like there's uh, one, two questions coming in by email. The first one from Hector and Patty. Hector says, happy Marvelous Monday. Well, thank you. Back at you. COP. So ConocoPhillips is the uh, ticker symbol that we are going to take a look at. Let me, uh, what screen are we on? Black, there we go. So here we've got ConocoPhillips. You see on the daily time frame, I have an A to B equals CD pattern drawn in. I can see a second A to B equals CD pattern. I see here an A to B equals CD pattern oops, on the weekly time frame. I'm just uh, doing a little housekeeping on the charts here, Hector, and then we'll go back and actually read your question. It may have nothing to do with the A to B equals CD patterns. So let's go read it. It says, COP, a weekly A, B, C, D up with projections, please. Well, they're perfect, okay? Been riding this bull for a while. Does the bull still have legs? So if we take a look at this, expand out the weekly time frame chart, and this is what Hector is looking at. So what Hector's looking at is last week, price closed above ConocoPhillips, 124.08. 124.08 was the uh, weekly swing point high from June 6, the week of June 6, 2022. Volume there was 35 million shares. Last week was 31 million shares. So price closed above that, but with lighter volume. Does that mean that the A to B equals CD pattern will not complete? Absolutely, positively not. That is not what it means. It's just if you pass it with volume, you've got a better opportunity. You've got a better likelihood. And I can't even nail that down to be completely accurate. Maybe David White, uh, who, um, uh, who's who got some of that data, could, uh, could add some light to that. But... First of all, or first of all, Hector, you do have price trade above that 124.08, and as long and along the C to D side, you're in the strong you're in the strong side from a price standpoint. You're on the left side of that C to D uh, angle out there, and you ask for the price projection. Well, gee, Stevie, just give that to him already. Well, the one to one, and this is a smaller A to B equals C D pattern because there's large ones that we could use out here. So I'm giving you the more conservative one, 136.32. But let's go take a look at the monthly time frame chart. Here, maybe we don't need to be as conservative. Um, so what are we going to use? Well, hmm. <laughs> so when I look at a monthly time frame chart out here, the A to B equals C D pattern that we'd be looking at the B point would be the uh, month of June out there. That month did uh, 200 million shares. You're only at 109 million shares. Today is a 24. So you're going to, you might close above it, which is still bullish. Again, we're looking at a monthly chart. Just closing above last week's uh, high is a, a bullish signal. Um, but is that going to give us that large A to B equals CD to upside? You know, Hector, don't, don't I, I won't draw that in there. Oh, okay, I'll draw it in there because you were asking. You said you were saying, I know you were just sitting in the background saying, come on, Stevie, would you at least just draw that in? Well, the A point out here could be March of 2020. The B point could be this June high. The C point could be this retracement down in July. That was a 44% retracement. And the one to one would get us up into the 181.54 level out there. Now, just for blanks and giggles out here, let's go take a look at the uh, white background charts. Let's see what ConocoPhillips has to say there. See if there's anything uh, that uh, Hector and Patty need to know about. So as we look at the daily time frame, that's on the left-hand side. Things look bullish there. If I look at the weekly chart, things look bullish here. We're trading to have last week's high. Same on the daily and the monthly, yeah, so not, not much more for me to add there other than uh, if you close above on a monthly basis, the June high, that'll uh, take uh, care of uh, a resistance level up at the 124.8 and truly suggest higher price. So, Hector and Patty, thanks for taking the time to write in. And uh, you guys have a uh, magnificent Monday. Tim M. writes in, and Tim wants to take a look at ticker symbol DRVN. So let's get that up on our screen out here, D-R-V-N, and that is uh, Driven Brands Holdings. The question reads like this. Could you please take a look at Driven Brands, D-R-V-N? Okay, good. I'm in a long position looking for support levels on the daily and the weekly time frames. Well, that's easy enough. Your first level of support on a daily time frame is going to be 3134. 3134 is the top of its daily profile. Price closed above it on Friday. You're trading above it today. That becomes support. If that level fails, Tim, your next area of support would be that oscillator and change line, 3087. See how the oscillator and change line on Friday changed colors and price was testing and rejecting that? That's a very bullish signal out there. Now, if it really is bullish, price will close above 3260. That's the resistance level, the TD9 count breakdown area from the daily time frame. Tim, you didn't ask about that, but I'm giving it to you. And then on the next support level, if price were to close below the oscillator and change line, 3059 and 2909. That's from the daily time frame. 
on the monthly time frame, I'm sorry, the weekly time frame, you've got price that is consolidated with inside its weekly profile. Tim, that ranges between $29.98 and $32.62. You close them up $32.62, price would go target its TD9 count top from the weekly time frame. That was the week of September 16th. And that high out there is um, $35.45, the low, $31.78. Now there's 7.9 million shares on that last week you were moving into it with 3.3 uh, so you're moving into it with lighter volume so support by the way 29.98 on a uh, weekly time frame as well as 30.89 now that's the oscillator and change line so tim I, I hope that provides you with all the information that you were looking for i believe that it does but if not go ahead and write me back and we'll make sure that we get that out for you uh inside the tiger's den see if I've got a question here from SNP. We do. And we're going to get to it when we get back from this break. And his questions are about EQT, looking for an entry, and Shopify, S-H-O-P. So we'll do that for SNP and a Tiger's Den as soon as we get back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go on to our next question. This one coming in from the Tiger's Den from SNP. Wants to take a look at two different instruments. The first one is EQT. And that's what we've got up on our screen here. You've got the daily, weekly, and the monthly time frame. So SNP, are you seeing what I'm seeing with regard to uh, this uh, daily time frame chart and Friday's uh, action out there? So if we take a look at Friday's action, price moved lower with volume of 14.1 million shares. Price closed below the swing point, the B point of an A to B equals CD to the downside, and it did it with volume. 
The volume on that trading session, that is September 29th, was 8 million shares. So it was passed with twice the volume out there. So that is suggesting that there is an A to B equals CD to the downside pattern that is unfolding. The A point being the high from September 14th, the B point being the low from September the 29th, and the uh, C point being the high from October 6th. That would give you a one-to-one -one price projection in the 3209 area. Now, if this A to B equals CD pattern SNP is going to form, price must close below the bottom of its weekly profile. And that's where price has found support. So we do have a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. I would say not so fast, not just yet, but the confirmation of that S&P would certainly be a close below 37.78 out there. So that's what I would be watching. On the daily time frame, there's no other pattern. What I mean by that, we'll go look at the white background charts out here. When I say there's no other pattern, there's no TD9 count. There's no roads momentum indicator uh, bottom signal. In fact, the uh, TD9 count bottom signal was negated on Friday, and that was the one that formed on September the 28th out there. Um, you do have additional support at 36.57. But what I would really be doing is I'd watch the bottom of that daily profile, a weekly profile, 37.78 out there. You close below that, odds favor the A to B pattern. A to B equals CD pattern is underway with the uh, at least a price projection in the 32.09 area. You also want to take a look at Shopify, S-H-O-P. That's a ticker symbol there. So let's go ahead and get those charts populated, S-H-O-P. I want to get that on my uh, black background charts as well. And uh, so we take a look at it. That's Shopify. Okay. So what I don't have, I don't believe I do. Yeah, it's not like on a daily time frame. I can point to a specific bottoming pattern out here. At least not one that uh, visually stopped, uh, that uh, uh, um, uh, sticks out at me. The weekly time frame chart, totally different story out there. Why is that? Well, you got a nice TD9 count bottom that formed two weeks ago. You closed above uh, that high uh, last week. That is a uh, uh, bullish signal. And you've got a new profile. Now, this is the, the new profile suggests that it's very possible this is just a counter trend rally. What do you mean, Steve? -O? Well, let's do this. Let me switch back to the uh, black back. First, is there anything else to look at here? Shopify on a monthly basis has a monthly TD9 count bottom. So everything here in Shopify is pointing to a bottom. However, now let's get to the however out here, the bad news, the good news, the bad news, or just simply the news out here. And that is the profile that formed uh, this week, that is forming as we speak right now. So as we take this back, we can see that uh, this profile formed below the prior profile. The prior profile formed below its prior profile, which formed below the prior the, the profile before that and then the profile before that. So it's telling us about this little downtrend. Now, what we haven't really seen are any closes above the top of a daily profile. This is a weekly profile. It's what I really mean is we haven't seen any closes above the top of a weekly profile. So what I would say here, SNP, is if price did close above 33.37, we know we've got that weekly uh, TD9 count and Rhodes momentum indicator bottom pattern out there. If price did close above 33.37, then Shopify would certainly be signaling a change in trend. And that change in trend, you can see I drew in, we might have done this on Friday, uh, a, a to B equals CD to the upside. It's going to require a close above 29.72. Now, there's 22 million shares on that trading session, 37 million, though, on Thursday. There were uh, 32 million on Friday. So price is really trying to uh, complete this A to B equals CD to the upside inside of Shopify. That would then give you a one-to-one -one price projection of 33.93. And above that, you'd be looking at 35.59. So, um, so what do you do? What, what? Uh, let's see if there's any. I don't see any other signal. That's worth uh, noting out here. So I'd say in the case of Shopify, things look good. Things look like they want to move higher. A price looks like it wants to move higher. But uh, what I'd be watching for S and P is how does price deal with 3387? Should it get there? And that's where it would release that information to you. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for the request. Much appreciated. The next one coming in from uh, HD via email. He says, hey, Steve, I uh, was looking at TLT for a long at about 92 bucks. Would you please look at the technicals, please? Absolutely. So for the TLT, let's get back to which chart am I on there? Black background. So let's do this a uh, couple of things. One, let me get the ZB going. ZB, two, two. And now what I'm going to do here, I'll put TLT up on our screen. 
uh, the three panel charts out here. But HD, you, you, you know the routine. Stevie's not really going to spend a whole lot of time here because I'm not really that interested in the ETF as I am interested in the uh, the actual underlying instrument, the 30-year treasury out here. But what this does show you is uh, you're trading below um, profiles for daily, weekly, and monthly. Um, yeah, so, uh, so, so nothing really good there. But the question is, is there some kind of bottom signal? that um, HD can take a long position on. So let's go look at the white background charts out here. And then the white background charts, if we start with the daily time frame, here's what I want you to do. Really a couple things that I would share with you about this. When I look at this chart, not like that, but when I do this, you see this linear move here? A very linear move all the way down until we got to this little TD9 count, bottom on September 27th, then we had just a few day rally right up into the resistance of its bearish structure daily profile out there, and then it continued to move lower. Linear moves like this are typically trading this. If you watch on an intraday chart, for example, and you watch uh, some of the some of the uh, stocks like Apple and so forth, you'll see you'll, you'll see when there is a trading desk. Stevie's theory only. I can't hook into anybody to to prove it, but it's a but it's a really good theory. Yeah, it's a really good one. I believe that it's actually true. And that is if you watch like on a 10, 15 minute chart inside of Apple, sometimes you'll see just this linear moves to the downside. That is a trading desk exiting that position. And they're just simply telling, you know, their folks uh, just to keep it in check. Not too, not too much to the downside, not too much to the upside. Just simply manage the position and liquidate it. Now, here, and I can't prove it, but uh, I mean, you could, you could choose anyone from across the globe out there, but certainly China. Uh, would make uh, the most amount of sense. We know by looking at BIS information, not BS information, but BIS information out there that uh, China has been unloading uh, bonds out here. And so they've got a lot to unload. Uh, but with regard to your specific question, as we take a look at this, so I wanted to point that out to you first, S&P. Do you really, uh, I'm sorry, uh, that was HD. Do you really want to get in the uh, middle of a uh, liquidation that's going on sovereign wise out here? I'm not talking about a small player. Regardless, you asked me about the technical picture. If you look at the 30-day, uh, 30 at uh, the 30-year uh, Treasury out here, you've got a rose momentum indicator signal that has been triggered. It needs a bullish reversal candle. Until you get that, you won't have any kind of a bottom. And price would not get any traction to the upside unless price could close above that red oscillator and change line. Um, uh, so that's the first things that you would be looking for. Now that's in the daily time frame. Let's go see if there's some intraday signals out here to suggest that maybe there is a move to the upside that's going to begin. Well, if we look at the five-hour time frame chart, you've got a Rhodes momentum indicator signal that's been triggered. It needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm. The same thing for the 240. Even though it says bullish hammer candle right now, this chart, uh, this candle does not complete until 2 p.m. So 1138's bullish hammer may not be that when we get to the 2 p.m. time period. We get back from this break, we'll finish looking at the 30-year Treasury. That is for HD. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Uh, folks, so we're taking a look at the 30 year treasury out here. This is for, um, I think it was for HD that had written in uh, for that. So we're looking at the daily, we've covered that. The five hour, we covered that. The four hour needs a bullish reversal candle and close above its oscillator and change line to suggest some kind of traction um, to the upside. The 120 minute chart, the same kind of pattern. Now, its bar here, currently a hammer candle, this is going to complete at 12 noon. So you've got about another 18 minutes or so before this completes. If you get a bullish reversal candle, then its next uh, price uh, resistance level will be the oscillator and change line. And then up at the 120.03 area is where it would likely target. So, you know, HD, if you're looking to trade the 30-year uh, treasury and it's just an intraday-ish or very short-term style trade, then cool. Um, you know, wait for some of these intraday signals to uh, confirm the 60-minute time frame chart may confirm a Rhodesman to indicator bottom pattern as well. But as far as a long-term, long-term trade, I say don't even consider it. Now, I could absolutely be wrong here. I'll just share with you the reason why I say don't even consider it or just a couple of the reasons. Here are the daily, weekly, monthly, and quarterly charts for the 30-year Treasury. And we'll see just this huge waterfall that has taken place this year. Prices below all levels of support. Now, when I say all levels of support, I'm referring to the uh, TD, I, I'm referring to the TAS market profiles. So really not a good scene out here. No bottom in uh, sight that I see. So other than an intraday set of uh, trading out here, you know, you're almost better off looking to sell rallies uh, than you are trying to take a long position inside of uh, TLT. And this could uh, this could last for quite some time. Remember, it's, again, here are the daily time frame chart, that linear type move on the way down. That is the absolute signature of a um, of a trade desks or desks that are uh, jettisoning out of these positions out here. Um, so, um, anyways, uh, be careful. Of course, we're, we're careful about everything, uh, or we try to be. Let's go to our next question. This next request coming in from Duncan Steve. Duncan wants to take a look at the Amazon out here. AMZN is the ticker symbol, and it is Amazon for short-term buy trade. So uh, let's switch over to the Amazon charts. That would probably be helpful. There we go. And uh, do I am, I am I on those charts? No. Got to change the actual screen. Thank you. Okay, now we are on the Amazon charts out here. What we see with regard to Amazon, it's taking on a swing point out there. I'm going to look at my other screen, see what kind of volume we're dealing with here, AMZN. Is it taking out that swing point with volume? Well, the swing point I'm referring to was the uh, trading day of uh, October the 18th. There were 65 million shares. The high was 119.52. Uh, the close on Friday was 119.32. The volume was 55 million shares, pushing into 
65, so a little bit lighter volume. Today, though, through the first two hours of trading, you are at 22 million. So if you multiply that times three, basically, you're at the 60 million range. So you're very close to the volume on October 18th. I don't know that that uh, um, linear math calculation of volume is really going to keep pace uh, with it. But you could be getting, could be generated an A to B equals CD to the upside. Your specific question was, though, looking for a entry point into this for a short-term buy trade out here. So just real quickly, daily looks like an A to B equals C to the upside is being uh, uh, is uh, forming. You're above. It's a bearish structure daily profile. The weekly chart, no bottom signal, but there is a prior bottom, prior rose momentum indicator bottom, price point back in that area. Could be the sign of a consolidation, but price is above the offset and change line. That suggests a further counter trend move up to the 130 area could unfold. And on a monthly time frame, Amazon found support at the bottom of the uh, current monthly profile. So that makes a lot of sense then to go ahead and take a look at a possible short-term long position. The ideal area right now is to look at a 30-minute time frame chart because this does have a Rhodes momentum indicator top, would be a pullback all the way to 114.50. Now, I'm not saying, Duncan, that you're going to get that, but if you're asking where would be the ideal entry point, which I believe is what you're asking, I would say it would be the TD9 count breakout area out there. That's not to say that 118.10 doesn't hold price, uh, but it was, um, you know, we did see a push through it uh, earlier this morning, a couple of um, hours ago, hour and a half ago or so. Uh, so I'd, I'd be patient on this one and see if you get a pullback to 114.50. That's the 30-minute time frame chart where we were taking a look at its TD9 count uh, breakout level. So is there anything else on Amazon that uh, I can uh, share with you? Yeah, not much else that I see out there, Duncan. So uh, thanks so much for the request. I hope that helps you out. If there's another piece of information that you're uh, looking for, then um, uh, please uh, feel free to share it. I know you posted in there, you said moves three plus dollars every day up and down. It does. In fact, the average true range over the last 10 trading sessions is $4.99 out there. So a good observation on your part. Thanks again for the request and have a magnificent Monday. I don't believe there's any other requests inside the Tigers Den. If there is, just bop me upside the head. I don't have anything by email, so no bopping needed there. And uh, so that just says, uh, let's go see what's interesting. So I'm going to go back to the, uh, go back to just the general markets. Let's take a look at the semis. Let's go uh, to the SMHs out here. So let's get those up on the screen. I'm sure somebody wants to see those. Uh, if the market is going to bottom, certainly the semis need to maintain that same bottom. So let's go see what patterns we have out here. And on a uh, weekly basis, the SMHs last week confirmed a TD9 count bottom. Now, you could get a lower low this week for that pattern, but you've got a brand new profile in the SMHs on a weekly basis that is formed with support at 178.16. Resistance from a profile standpoint to 11.73 on a daily time frame. Rose momentum indicator bottom signal. Price consolidating with inside its a daily profile. Odds favor move to 189.61. If price were to close above 189.61, that takes us up to the 209 area. And on a monthly time frame chart, the SMHs look like they will complete a TD nine count bottom next Monday. Now, I say looks like because the SMHs will need to close below if that TD9 count monthly pattern is going to form. They need to close below 203.73 in order for that to come to fruition uh, next Monday. On a 30-minute time frame chart, so now we're going to the shortest time frame right now that I'm tracking for this. And you've got a Rhodes momentum indicator signal, a top out there for the SMHs. Um, 178.55 would be a nice buy point area. That's a TD9 count breakout level on the 30 minute time frame. But all in all, the SMHs, they're holding up pretty well. You got that nice TD9 count bottom on the uh, weekly time frame. You've got a Rhodes momentum indicator on the daily time frame, consolidation with inside of uh, profiles, and uh, price should go target the 189.61 and above that again, 209.37. So that was on the SMHs. What do we want to look at uh, next for the next uh, 20 or 30 seconds out here? What do we want to uh, look at? Car, Avis Budget Car Company. Let's go see what Avis is uh, selling at. Well, it's selling at 2144. I'm sorry, it's up 2144. It's selling at 210. It's up about 11%. 
Nice big move out here. Negates its TD9 count top. It does that on Friday. Tells us about a strong momentum move to the upside. And that's what we've got going. Where is it the car is likely headed to? Excellent question. I would say, based upon the weekly time frame chart, based upon the monthly time frame chart, car wants to head to 250, 245, trade down to 209.58. Steve Rhodes with TFN and the Dow's up 318, S&P 27. We'll be back in just a few. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Let's go out to the Mile High City to speak with Ron in Denver. Ron, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. Yeah, How are you? Steve, thank you for taking the call. You bet. Uh, a few weeks ago, uh, on I bought this company that sells jewelry, uh, diamond rings and so forth, Brilliant Earth, B-R-L-T. At that time, the stock was about 560, uh, about four calls, and then on the fives for November 18th, then about a week and a half ago, I, I went ahead and it was up around seven and a half, so I did a spread, seven and a half to tens, and I bought some more calls. For November 18th, how, what would be a, what are my chances between now and November 18th? What kind of target? Well, you know, it's a great question. Um, I've got the uh, white background screens up on my uh, chart out here. I'm looking at the daily time frame. And then the daily time frame, it's pretty easy to see the A to B and the C to D pattern, which is going to complete at about the one to one would take us to about 961. The actual high today 
is a 945 out there. Now, just because it gets to the one-to-one -one completion of an A to B equals CD run does not mean the move is over out there. But today is also going to form bar number eight of a TD nine count. So it looks like to me that we're looking for a short-term top to possibly form here in BRLT. And that would be between today and Wednesday, that top being the TD nine count. If you were to get a bearish reversal candle, during this time period as well, these next few days, that would then generate a sell the D point pattern. Even though we haven't made that full move to 961, we've gotten close enough in our work, or maybe it does make that move out there. Um, so I would say, now it may just be a small pullback to support. And a small pullback to support run would be really the top of its uh, daily profile, either 818 or the center. And it was a bear structured profile. So that says a counter trend move, meaning a move lower, would or should find support at 787. Now, it could do all this work. When did you say the expiration was in November? November 18th. November 18th. Uh, yeah. There, you know, the, their numbers say they got almost 14 bucks a share in cash. Their sales are moving up. I don't know. People are buying diamond rings, I guess. Engagement rings. Well, that's a beautiful thing. Look, the stock chart looks good. You know, you're above last week's high right now. You're above Friday's high. But the, your concern is just simply over the next couple of days, the TD9 count pattern and or watching for some type of bearish reversal candle run. We're closing out the show. Have a okay, magnificent I'll, I'll, Monday. I think I'll sell a couple of